Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. First of all, I would like to apologize because I've not been really present these last uh, three weeks. Uh, I've been a bit sick for a few days and uh, yes, my voice was completely off. <laughs> my voice was broken, so I was really unable to film and to talk. And uh, yes, last week I went in the south of France, so I was not able to film also. But uh, this is my favorite for the month of October. I'm a bit late, but still, <laughs> we're going to talk about them. And uh, my vlog video uh, then is going to come after this one. So it's still coming. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm still editing the video, but it will be coming after this one. So let's start with my favorites for the month of October. So the first one was a fragrance that I discovered really at the beginning of the month of October. And it is from a collection I... I never heard about, honestly, and it is a fragrance by Givenchy, which is named Trouble Fête. So I believe this is coming from the new L'Atelier collection by Givenchy. I remember that they had um, Atelier collection uh, with, uh, what was it, Rose Caress, something like that, or Chypre Caress. So they had many fragrances and apparently this collection was discontinued. But they launched a new one, uh, it was maybe last year, with new fragrances also this year. I never heard about it. It was the first time I was able to see it and to try it. And they have many fragrances, they are all really great. I was uh, pleasantly surprised by the, these fragrances. And the one that really kept my attention, let's say, I really enjoyed this one. I fell in love with it. And even if this is not something that I would typically wear uh, for autumn or winter, this is more a spring fragrance. I really enjoy that one. So Trouble Fête is a fig fragrance. So the note of fig is a note that I really enjoy usually for spring, beginning of summer, but sometimes at the beginning of autumn, it's also really great. And this one is a sweet fig, but this is quite unusual, I would say. It's quite fruity and sweet, but... It's almost apricot-y in the opening, but you can feel that it has some depth and something deeper behind with the frankincense, I believe, or olibanum that is behind. And it has also this note of sesame that is really addictive. So when I smell this fragrance, oh my God, I, I love this one. I want to, to wear it. I want to smell it. So I wear it for a few days. And uh, yes, I bought it when I was in Paris because I cannot find it where I live. It's quite um, hard to find. Or you have to buy it online. So you can, you can check online this uh, collection. And yes, they have many, many fragrances. So I believe I'm going to talk about them <laughs> also in my vlog video. So yeah, if you want to know more about this collection, I'm going to talk about it. Oh, and I forgot to mention also, uh, I don't know the nose behind this collection. So if you know who created these fragrances, please tell me because I, I'm really intrigued by it. Okay, so my next fragrance, of course, one that I wore a lot, that I really adore, is the new Shalimar. So Shalimar Millésime Planifolia, Vanilla Planifolia. So yes, I'm really thinking about getting a backup of this one before it's too late because I really adore it. Um, it's an explosion of vanilla. So even if you're not fond, I would say, of uh, Shalimar, I really recommend you to try it because... If you love vanilla, you, you may really enjoy this one. It has a great quality of vanilla. I already talked about it <laughs> uh, previously, but it has this uh, tincture of vanilla, vanilla tincture that is really something uh, specific to Guerlain that they created them, themselves. So, so um, they also used some uh, bio, uh, I say bio in French, but bio maybe <laughs> in English, bio vanilla pots for this fragrance. And um, I saw that they were using two types of vanilla, so ethyl vanillin and um, this tincture of vanilla. But I read also that they are using a vanilla extract. So I was able to find more notes for this one because when they released it, they just said that it was smelling like vanilla. Okay, but I, I suppose there's something more here. <laughs> I can smell that there's something more. I smell some citrus too and some a little bit of floral notes behind. But just to get a, bad, a backbone of, uh, of Shalimar, so I thought maybe it was uh, jasmine or I don't, I don't know, and something almondy too. So I was looking for the notes and what I found was um, in the top notes you have bergamot 
and almond. Uh, in the middle notes, you have rose absolute, ethyl vanilla, and vanilla tincture. And in the base notes, you have this vanilla extract, uh, opopanim, and musks. So I don't know how you pronounce that, opopanim. Opopanim, <laughs> sorry, I don't know what's the name in English. I believe that's the same. So basically, opopanim is the amber cord used by uh, Guerlain. So I believe they are maybe the one that created uh, this uh, note. So this is an amber cord that you can find in the several Guerlain fragrances. I believe this is what they use in the in Chalimars, what's giving also this warm uh, amber base. And they also use this uh, note in some other um, fragrances, for example, in the La Rilla Matia collection. And yes, we're going to talk about it also a bit later. Okay, so talking about Guerlain and the uh, La Rilla Matia collection, one that I also really adored uh, last month and I wore a lot was Iris Torrefier. So this one was a creation by Delphine Jelk. And it has the note of uh, coffee, cardamom, iris. So this is what I get the most. It has also some uh, ambrette. And you have also behind this uh, vanilla uh, a tea note and this um, opopanim <laughs> note that I just talked about. So to give this amber base, this warmer base. So basically this one, I described it as a, a lipstick mark on a coffee, on a steaming coffee cup. So this is exactly what it smells like to me. It really has this uh, cosmetic vibe, lipsticky vibe with the iris. And also the coffee, uh, this is not a note that I smelled a lot, I believe, when I wrote this fragrance at the beginning, when I got it. And the more I'm wearing this fragrance, the more I get the coffee. So... Yeah, I don't know. When I spray it, immediately what I get is the coffee. But after that, the coffee is becoming less present, I would say. I have more the iris and uh, maybe the ambrette. Yeah, and it's a great fragrance in the sense that um, I can wear it in any occasion. Like, I want to go out, I want to go to a, coffee, uh, a cafe, <laughs> I want to meet some friends, I want to go to work. I know that I won't be offending uh, anyone, and I, I, I love this fragrance. So this is really a no-brainer for me, and uh, it was my, let's say, October one of my October no-brainer. So if you're talking about coffee, another fragrance that I already talked about, I believe in my September favorites, but I already wore, um, that I've been wearing also in October, is uh, Coffee Break. Oh, you can see. So Coffee Break, of course, is a coffee fragrance. If it can focus. Yes, it's a bit better. But it's a sweeter coffee, I would say, and... Uh, milkier if you can say that than in Iris Torrefier. So here the coffee is really creamy and sweet and blended with some lavender. So these are the two notes let's say that I get the most this creamy coffee and the lavender. I know that it has some ah, many much more notes let's say listed but this is not yeah this is the two notes that I really get here. So it's supposed also to have some uh, pepper, orange blossom and patchouli. I don't really get that. Maybe a hint of orange blossom in the opening, but the lavender is really the note that is um, that you get the most with the coffee. And yes, maybe something sweet behind, like like a tonka bean or vanilla. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, basically, if you love coffee and if you love lavender, but if you're gonna enjoy this one. This is really a calming. Uh, cozy um, and comfy fragrance, something that I love to wear when I'm going to bed or for the evening or when it's really cold outside and then, I don't know, I want to get a blanket and <laughs> stay on my sofa and watch Netflix, I don't know, but this is the kind of fragrance for this uh, situation, let's say, and I really enjoyed it. Okay, so I stay on the, let's say, gourmand fragrances with coffee. <laughs> And another one that I wore also, uh, last month was Noir Exquis by L'Artisan Parfumeur. So this fragrance is based on coffee, but it has also a, a beautiful note of chestnut that I really enjoy. I found the notes of um, chestnuts or nuts, this kind of notes are really addictive. And the uh, chestnut here is sweet and quite addictive with the coffee. It has... <clears throat> Also some floral notes and a beautiful vanilla uh, tonka beans uh, pair behind. And yeah, this is really like the... It smells like autumn to me. 
Yeah, because you have this, um, let's say, autumnal notes, <laughs> like the chestnut, the maple syrup, the, the, the coffee. All these notes makes me think about uh, autumn. So th this is the period I love to wear it. I believe this is the kind of fragrance I wear only uh, for autumn and not the rest of the year. And yes, I started wearing it and um, I really enjoy it. Mm. My next fragrance, I believe, can be also considered as a gourmand fragrance, and it is a fragrance by Nikolai. It is Kiss Me Intense. So this is quite a new fragrance in my in my collection. This is one that I've been wanting to try for a while because I w I read the notes online and I uh, saw that this is something that I could really enjoy. So this fragrance has the notes of uh, bitter almond, lemon, anise, heliotrope, jasmine, ylang orange flower, clove, cinnamon, vanilla, opopanax and musk. But uh, to me this is just a really sweet sugary almond. <laughs> this is what I get the most. So the, the almond, the heliotrope, it's also floral and um, I get the, the lemon also and the anise. So these are the notes that I get the most in this fragrance. It has something um, uh, deliciously I would say not old-fashioned, but, you know, these Nikolai fragrances, they are really classy, elegant, they have something really classic. But also this slightly Guerlain vibe, I would say, in these fragrances, but um, like a bit modern, more modern than the classic Guerlain, if I could say. And you, you get this vibe with the anise, I would say, in the fragrance. So this is something I was really scared because anise is a note that I usually don't really enjoy. <laughs> but I think it's really well mixed with the almond, with the vanilla, with the lemon. And it also reminds me of a French pastry. So I say French, but I believe this is a Catalan pastry. So you can find in the north of Spain and the south of France that we call a rusqui. So <laughs> Maybe if I can find pictures, I'm going to put it on screen. So Ruski, you can have this. Uh, this is a biscuit that is uh, that has a sugar top, let's say, that has sugar around it. <laughs> and uh, it has uh, two different flavors. So you can have a lemon flavor or an anise flavor. And I don't know, it, when I smell this fragrance, I really... <laughs> I really think about this uh, this pastry. It reminds me of this uh, this kind of biscuit. So if you know the, this um, biscuit, I, I believe you're going to understand what I'm talking about. But yeah, this is really ah, comforting, beautiful and sweet. And I was really surprised. It's quite sweet on paper, but on my skin, uh, strangely, it's less sweet. Usually that's not the case, but here it is. It's a bit more floral and um, the heliotrope is a bit more prominent on my skin. But I, I, I don't mind. It's just really beautiful. My next fragrance is a fragrance by Guerlain and it is one that I've been wanting for a long time. I didn't get the occasion to have it. So, okay, let's see. <laughs> so it is Tonka Imperial. So this is one of the fragrances that I tried or retried, let's say, during the, the Guerlain event. So the launch of the new collection. Ah, new collection, no, it was just rebottled, <laughs> la, la matière. And um, yeah, this one... I smell it and say, oh my God, I love it. Why don't I have it in my collection? And yeah, now that the price were really increased, it was a bit hard for me <laughs> to decide to buy it because yes, I have, I don't know, maybe mental barrier. Maybe you have that too, like uh, over 200 euro. It's a bit hard for me to see, to, to get decided to, to buy a fragrance. So this one was, I think now it's almost uh, 300 euro for... 100 ml and yeah i don't know in my head i had a, a blockage like a, no i can't it's really <laughs> it's getting too expensive for me and i was really lucky that uh, i found someone that was selling uh, his bottle so i believe, I believe <clears throat> he got it as a gift and uh, he didn't want it so i get it half priced so i'm really happy about that and uh, yes i just i just love this fragrance so what does it smell like it's an overdose of tonka beans with almond. So if you love almond tonka beans, I believe you're gonna love this one. I see this fragrance often compared with the Fève Delicieuse. 
not really, I don't know, I'm not really into Fève Delicieuse. Um, it has this almond also in Fève Delicieuse because you have this uh, uh, cherry note. Uh, I don't know, you know, my nose and <laughs> don't really get the, the, the cherry note. Usually I get almond and that's it and something uh, like red fruits. But I don't know, the magic was not there for me in Fève Delicieuse. Um, I like it. But it's not a love. But when I tried Tonka Imperial, I was like, oh, that's what I want. <laughs> this is exactly what I want for this autumn. So this is um, almond with Tonka beans. It has some slightly aromatic vibes that, that make you think about Gala, you know? So you have this slightly citrus aromatic notes behind that when I smell them, I think, oh, this, this is a Gala fragrance. And I don't know, for the rest, this is basically what I get. It's quite simple without being simple. simple. <laughs> it's hard to, to, to explain, but you have the impression that this fragrance is really simple, but I'm sure that behind that there's a lot of work and a lot of different notes that it's really well blended. So well blended that you don't really perceive what's behind, um, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but I just love it. I could wear it all every day for, for autumn, but yeah, I have many fragrances, so I want to enjoy also the other ones. But yeah, I, I get it at the at the end of October, and I believe I, yeah, I've already been wearing it a lot. So be prepared. I believe it's going to come back in my November favorites. My next fragrance is another gourmand fragrance, <laughs> and it is Parle-moi de Parfum. By Parle-moi de Parfum, it is Game of the Noël. So this fragrance is a um, sweet orange blossom fragrance. So it smells like a marshmallow. Guimauve is a marshmallow in in French. And yeah, it has, it's of, often been uh, compared with um, Love Don't Be Shy. So I can see the similarities because this has some similar notes, but this one is less sweet than uh, Love Don't Be Shy. So if Love Don't Be Shy is really too sweet for you, you want something less cloying, let's say, if it's cloying for you, I really recommend you to try Give Move the Noel because to me it's uh, more floral, I would say. So it's more about the orange blossom and it has also some sweetness with the, the sugar and the vanilla. It has also some citrus, I would say, like maybe lemons or oranges. I feel some, something like that. And yeah, I don't know, it's less cloying to me. It's more elegant and more floral. So in the end, this is one that I want to wear more than uh, Love Don't Be Shy. But I love this fragrance, but the problem with it is that it makes me really hungry. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if I, I'm wearing this fragrance or Love Don't Be Shy, I just want to eat marshmallow all the time. So this is not something really good, yeah. If you don't want to take 10 kilos, if you're under right away, maybe that's a good thing. But for me, no, <laughs> it's not a good thing. So I love wearing this fragrance, but it really makes me hungry. <laughs> okay, this is when I realized that I wore really many <laughs> gourmand fragrances last month. Uh, usually I'm not really into gourmand fragrances, but I, I realized that I, maybe I'm getting more and more into it, especially for colder months. So the next one is Umbrella for Two. Know if you can see it, yes, by Floraiku. So this fragrance is a tea fragrance, but this is not again what I get the most. What I get the most in this fragrance is the red fruit, so the black currant that you have on top. But it has something more, like something nutty, or you imagine something like a I don't know red fruit cake or red fruit muffin. But maybe with some nuts or something like hazelnut. Yes, I, I do smell something like uh, red fruits and hazelnut. But in food, you know, <laughs> like uh, in a biscuit or in a cake or a muffin. It's really edible, like uh, it's like in marzipan or almond, nutty hazelnut with red fruits. If it's telling you something, but this is what I get in this fragrance. It's really delicious. It doesn't make me as hungry as a um, Game of the Noel, so this is a good thing. But yeah, still, it smells really good. I'm not necessarily into fruity fragrances a lot, but this one I really enjoy. 
and it has a really good longevity and projection and see yeah whatever you want so if it's something important for you before buying fragrance yeah I, i'm telling you this one has a crazy longevity on me and i have dry skin so usually nothing stays on me really really long Okay, let's continue with tea fragrances. So my next one, I've already talked about it, I believe, in my last two videos. So I'm still wearing it, <laughs> even if it's autumn now. And it is Te Yulong by Armani. So this fragrance is your citrusy, tea, fresh and aromatic fragrance. Really a no-brainer for me. Like, I don't know, I want to go out quickly, go to the supermarket, go to the vet, go to... I, I don't know, I have a, a meeting... I can definitely uh, wear this one, know that I'm going to smell good and I'm go not going to bother anyone. Good for office too. So it's really fresh and not that light for tea uh, fragrance and citrusy fragrance. Yeah, because it has also this uh, vetiver and uh, ambrette in the base. But what I smell after some time is the iris and that I find really pleasing and elegant in this fragrance yeah and this is maybe why i love it so much it's um, quite versatile i would say and yeah i still enjoy it <laughs> my next fragrance is uh, i believe also a tea fragrance because it's called Te d'arbuca by l'orchestre parfum so when you see the name maybe you expect a fresh tea fragrance also but that's not the case here the tea, if it's present, it's not really something that I get the most in this fragrance, but it's more maybe treated like a spice. So it's really sweet, ambery and spicy and aromatic also. So it's a bit fresh in the opening. I suppose it has some citrus, but after that, it's really warm and cozy, spicy. It has some uh, immortal. So in the immortal here... I believe it's because of this note, because I know it's used in this case to have this um, tobacco note or tobacco cord, I don't know. But it smells more like a spicy tobacco ambery fragrance to me <laughs> than a citrusy tea, <laughs> for example. But it's strong, it's dark, it's spicy, but not too strong, not uh, in your face, you see. So it's made really well, really well blended. I, I really enjoy this one. I think it's lovely for this period of the year. Totally unisex. Maybe men would enjoy this one a bit more, but I really love it and I, and, and I wear it. So, yeah. My next fragrance is a warm, spicy rose, and it is Spice Must Flow by Eta Libre d'Orange. So, I, I love this bottle. I can't see I don't see the camera, but I, I really <laughs> enjoy the bottle. I think it's really special and really beautiful. And I also enjoy the name because, yeah, to me, it refers to the Dune, the movie or the, the book, if you want. Yeah, so this fragrance <laughs> has uh, cardamom, has spices in the top. And then it's supposed to have, to have um, Turkish rose, ginger and incense in the base. So I really get all these notes. But to me, there is something maybe missing in the... The list of the notes like in the opening i get something um maybe like lemongrass or cypriol that is not listed in the notes so it's spicy but it has also this um, balsamic slightly aromatic uh, green touch of the rose i don't know how to explain that but you know when you have cypriol associated with rose or um i don't know it has this uh, slightly lemongrass effect sometimes so I, I do feel that in the opening, but I don't mind. It's really, to me, it's really beautiful. I love the quality of the ingredients here. It's not unique at all. I've already said that, but it's not unique. But the performance, the, the longevity is great. The quality is great. And I just enjoy the juice and the bottle. So that's it. I, I just enjoy it. <laughs> and I've been wearing it last month. And I believe I've been wearing it also in November. Um, yeah, it was my scent of the day yesterday, so yeah, I really enjoy it. My next fragrance is uh, also a rose fragrance, and it's called Le Cri. So it's Le Cri de la Lumière, I believe that's the cry or the shout, I don't know, for light, for the light, by Parfum d'Empire. So this fragrance is completely different from the previous one. It's not a warm rose fragrance and spicy fragrance. This is really your 
called rose, um, rose and iris fragrance with aldehydes. So definitely different. I love also the umbrella behind and the mask. It has some citrus on top, but this fragrance is really cold and elegant and classic, but it has something really cold, you know, and sharp in it, but that I really enjoy. Almost metallic, I would say, the, the mix between the rose and the, the patchouli behind. And I was quite surprised by the name of this fragrance, Le Cri de la Lumière, because to me, it's evoking something like a, a search for the light and uh, something really luminous, uh, lightful, I don't know if you say that, and warm and and this is not what I get here. It's really cold and almost metallic and implacable, um, I don't know, like a white statue, statue and it has something really dark in some sense then and uh, calling it le cri de la lumière i found it quite uh, antithesis and yeah so i found it really really strange like um and the cri to me is like you're crying to to get noticed to get seen but it's almost the contrary like you're wearing something but to be um mixed into into the mass i would say so i don't know maybe i'm thinking i'm overthinking it <laughs> i think i am but I was really surprised by the name, and this is something that made me really think about it, overthinking even more, I think. But, yeah, I really enjoyed it. There is something special about the fragrances, about Parfum d'Empire. And, yes, if it's talking to you, I believe you, you're going to find one fragrance that's really talking to you in this collection, and because they have many, many types of fragrances. They have a great tobacco one, they have... Really great fragrances. The Immortal Course is great. I love the Aqua di Scandola. Yeah. <laughs> and this one is the one that talked to me the most. So I wore it this month. This is not a fragrance that is that easy to wear. It's a bit a boss, <laughs> beach boss fragrance, I would say. I don't know. I really need to be in the mood to wear this fragrance. But it's really beautiful. I enjoy it. <laughs> I don't know if you would understand at all what I was trying to say, but... <laughs> This is quite complex, so um, I love it, but this is really complex fragrance and something that uh, it's hard to present maybe in three seconds or three minutes. So maybe I should make a review about this one. My next fragrance is a fragrance by Maison Violet. Oh, I think you won't be able to see it, but <laughs> it is Pourpre d'automne. So Pourpre d'Automne is a fragrance that was uh, originally released in 1920-something, I believe. And uh, this uh, house, so Maison Violette, was uh, bought by three young perfumers who are part of, let's say, this new French generation of perfumers. They were at school, I believe, with also with, um, how is it, uh, Patrick Revillard, I think, Patrice Revillard. So, yes, all the <clears throat> these new perfumers that we have... <laughs> Lately, I think it's really great because it's bringing a lot of modernity in French perfumery also. So they, they decided to buy this uh, house, Maison Violet, and to recreate, let's say, or revisit some old creation. So they worked with Nathalie Lorson and Pourpre d'Automne, and I saw that it was a great, great success. <sighs> really enjoy it. So if you love uh, cosmetic fragrances, um, lipsticky fragrances, I think you definitely need to try this one. So if it had a color, of course, it would be violet, purple. It smells like violet, <laughs> of course. So it has violet and violet leaves, but also iris, rose. So I sm do smell the rose a lot. And it's really pretty. It has something um, powdery, musky, but Slightly vintagey, I would say, but still modern, elegant. I, I really love this one. Beautiful. Yeah, a, a great fragrance for autumn. <clears throat> I love the, the name of it also. I love this kind of fragrance for this period. Um, it also reminds me of, of some other fragrances that I have, like Missia. So if you love Missia, Cuir um, what else? What um, else? Ah, Eau de Velours by Bottega Veneta also. I, I think you're gonna enjoy this one. 
Okay, so let's talk about my discoveries for the month. The first one I want to talk about is the new release by Ducita, and it is Anamkara. So this fragrance is a floral fragrance. It has a sharp uh, green opening, almost medicinal. But after that, you get this uh, beautiful orange blossom, almost, I would say, narrowly like, because to me, narrowly sometimes has this medicinal uh, vibe, green medicinal vibe, so that I get in this fragrance. And you have also this uh, lots of citrus in the opening. So this blood orange that also reminds me of some other fragrances that associate these notes. So, um, yes, it made me think about um, Dior J'adore Infinissime a little bit in the opening because you have this blood orange with the the white flowers, but also uh, Bouquet Encore uh, by uh, L'Orchestre Parfum. So it really reminded me of this one, but at the beginning, because this fragrance evolves a lot, it projects a lot also. <laughs> so after that, you have this... Um, white floral bouquet i would say so the, the jasmine and the tuberose that is quite strong and a bit bubblegummy sweet and fruity and after this phase you have um, a short um, rose and tea uh, period i would say but really short i get that but not for a long time maybe 30 minutes and and in the end i had a lot of vanilla with um, the vetiver the, and the patchouli I didn't really get the sandalwood, but maybe that's my nose. And it's getting really woody in the end. But this woody um, notes uh, mixed with the vanilla and, I don't know, this floral notes that you had behind. So I believe the jasmine is really giving me a um, Baccarat Rouge 540 vibe. So I, I really get that in this fragrance. So this is something that starts almost like um not a love don't be shy but i would say a bouquet encore and finish on the baccarat rouge 540 so if you enjoy also the fragrances that i've, I've talked about that i've just talked about i think you you're gonna enjoy this one it's really beautiful i believe it's quite easy to love and to wear and yeah but be prepared it has a monstrous sillage and uh, projection on me it's, it's crazy and longevity is really good too so yeah a really great discovery i was happy to to get that so um, this was not something that was gifted to me i know that this is the format that usually they give to reviewers influencers etc but this is one that i bought uh, to someone because yeah, I, I wanted to have it and uh, apparently this person was not happy with it i don't know but I, I bought it from someone so my next discovery is the new fragrance by memo and it's called flam so yeah for this one i was a bit surprised because when i saw this uh, viking picture i don't know this viking boat i was thinking about something really strong and for cold weather and <laughs> this is not exactly what it was so yeah it doesn't smell the same now that what i tried when i tried it at first but i remember when i tried it it was really about um I would say almost something like orange blossom and really orangey, uh, citrusy, light and floral. So this is not at all what I expected when I saw that. And yes, you have the notes also inside. So you can see, so it has a bitter orange, Italian bergamot, a clary sage. So what I get the most now is something really musky. I was surprised I saw that it had maybe something like ambrette. So yeah, maybe it's close, ambrette tolid. I don't know if you know what it is. It's certainly a number accord. Yeah, and after that I had the tonka bean and the vanilla. So it was really pleasant with the jasmine. But now I have something really musky. So yeah, yeah, I have it now, the bitter orange essence. I thought it was something like a orange blossom. But it's really pleasant. But this is not the kind of fragrance I would be wearing. Yeah, I wore it to try it, of course, <laughs> during the months. I wore it uh, during the months of October, but usually this is not the kind of uh, fragrance that I would be wearing for autumn, maybe more for spring. Still, it's pleasant. I, I, I like it. Is it bottle worthy? I don't know. I'm not sure yet. I would, I would like to try it in spring to see how it evolves and reacts with the, the, the weather, but 
yeah, this is not bad. This is not bad. I, I enjoyed it. My next fragrance is another fragrance by Memo. It's not a new release, but I've never had the chance to try it. And it is Italian Leather. So I was really pleasantly surprised by this one because, yeah, of course it has leather, but it has also this uh, fresh aromatic opening that I really enjoyed. This tomato leaf note is really pretty. And what I get the most on me is something leathery green with vanilla. And it's... Uh, it's really beautiful. If you love green fragrances mixed with vanilla, this, which is my case, and you enjoy also leather, I believe you re you're gonna really enjoy this one. <sighs> it's so beautiful. I think it's really clever that the the mix between the tomato leaf, the leather, the galbanum, and the vanilla. <sighs> this is so. This is what I get the most in this fragrance. I know that it has also some iris, but I don't really get the iris here. And I have a warm base, so I believe it has some resins and yeah, maybe something woody also in the base, but definitely the leather, the tomato leaf, the vanilla, the galbanum, this is what I get the most. It, and it's just beautiful. So I thought, okay, it has lots of, let's say, greenness and aromatic notes. So maybe this would be better also for spring uh, in warmer weather, I would say. But it was really working really well on my skin on um, autumn in my climate, I would say, in the north of France. So I took it with me to make a try uh, when I went on holidays in the south of France to see my parents. So the weather is not that good <laughs> there too, but uh, still it's a bit warmer. So they have five or six degrees more than in the north of France. And it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work on me in the heat, so um, there is something in the notes, in the base notes, that turned a bit on my skin. Like um, when I have, I have this, I had this issue also with the uh, angel's share. So I recognize a bit a note that is in common in these fragrances, and that turned on my skin. And I had this issue, but only in the heat. In the cold um, weather, it was really beautiful. So um, this one may be bottle worthy. Uh, I really enjoy it. Maybe more than Flam in the end. Oh, it's really pretty. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like this one. <laughs> so voila, these were my favorites for the month. I hope you enjoyed them. Tell me if you've tried any of these fragrances. What do you think about them? And tell me also what you've been wearing for the month of October. And I hope to see you soon in my next video. Bye. <laughs>